Hey guys, Rogue here, Pro League of Legends player and coach. Today I want to make a video addressing something I see all the time when I coach supports, and that's players who just completely give up on their laning phase. All right, they forfeit so many lanes that are completely winnable, and so today I want to give you guys the tricks of the trade on how to win any bot lane matchup. Let's go get right into it. All right, guys, so jumping into our first replay, we're going to be looking at the perspective of this Karma player. Karma is a support that should get pushed in pretty much every matchup that I can think of. All right, crazy pushing power. First mistake already, guys, is the way we walk to lane. All right, if you guys win the level one fight to the death, you should always walk the more aggressive way. So for blue side, you're going to go through here. For red side, we're going to go through here. I see this common mistake as well of people pathing this way. This is just less efficient, guys. If you have to walk the long way, walk like this. All right. If you're walking the fast way, as a range champion, you can usually do four auto attacks. Sometimes you can get away with five, but I like to recommend people to do just four and get to lane a bit quicker, and so we can get on that way first, right? All right, so instantly we're a bit late to lane, but it's not going to matter too much here, right? But the first mistake is just how defensively we stand. Like, this trade is great, right? This trade is awesome. We push them back. But now, we're far further back than we should be. So in bot lane, the really important thing is control of this middle bush. Right? Whoever gets control of this middle bush can position a lot more aggressively. So for example, right, there is no difference between standing here and standing here. And if this karma player feels they need to play safely, they can simply stand in the bush here, and they have the threat of someone who is standing at the front of this bush. Right? So instantly you're in range to queue both of them, and they have to play a lot more concerned at least. It might cause the enemy to ward this bush, and in that case, you get a ward for free. All right? And a lot of the time what people will do is they'll go lens level 1. In a matchup you really want to win, you can go lens level 1, you can play in this bush, and when the enemy places that ward, you can simply kill it. The important thing is, is that you want to be hitting this second wave as soon as possible, guys. You want to be in range to throw your Q, hit the creeps, and start auto-attacking it before the enemy. So we're going to see a really good example here. We already, even from standing here, we could Q, right? But from the bush, we could easily Q, splash our AoE onto all three targets here, get some poke and some push at the same time, and we wouldn't be in threat of being hit. So this is something that also works for very long-range AD carries, and I'm going to show you again a bit later, it also works when you play melee supports. Right? So if, for example, you're versing a long-range AD carry like Aphelios, like Caitlyn, and you feel like you can't get up and hit the wave without being auto-attacked, of course you can't. They've got more range than you. So how do you do? You take control of the bush, and you use the Fog of War to get within their range, or at least start the fight with one extra hit before them. All right, so we get that poke, but of course we get pushed out by Karma or by, by Jana because of course she can see us, so she knows how to respond. We start this push on the wave. But again, we've lost our positioning again, guys. So this is the really big thing, right? All of this is so that we get that level two first. The moment we get level two, if the enemy can test us, they instantly die. So right now, we're going to get two before them. They have to kill this minion and this minion, and we just have to kill this one. We're about three or four auto attacks ahead. So if we hit level two, we immediately start fighting and the enemy stands still to hit a minion four times, they are going to die. Right. So again, with the positioning, right? When we get that level up, crazy aggressive, right? If we were doing what I said and we were playing in this bush, and Jana does something like this, we simply kill the minion. We can even skill W on Karma level two, just because we're in range to land it. We W him. As soon as it roots, we Mantra Q, and he dies. Right. But we're going to see exactly what happens here. We get the level up, and because we're so far back in the lane, we can't get that all in. All right, so this is going to bleed over pretty badly, right? We don't really get anything from our early level up because we were too far away. By the time we ran up, the enemy's leveled up. And our hero eventually is going to die to a gank. Now, the reason we die to this gank, guys, it's not because we were pushed too far up. It's because we played too passive, right? It's okay to take push early, even if their jungler can gank bot. You just have to be really confident doing it. If our hero hit level 2 early, we would have got the all-in before our jungler gets there, before the enemy jungler gets there, sorry. Or we would have pushed the wave up far enough that we would have had time to go leave and place a ward before the jungler gets there. So because we played so passive, we got no chances to leave lane. And that's why we don't get our ward down, and that's eventually why we die to this gank. 
All right, let's jump on into the next one. All right, guys, so in the second game, this is actually one of my own games. So this this will be a roundabout master tier EU West server, and I'm going to be playing some Leona in a matchup that I'm sure many low elo players would say is impossible to win. All right, we've got Leona, melee champion versus two very long range double poke champions completely outranging us and you would think that there's no way to win this lane and we should just play for a level three all in all right but i say stuff that and we're going to see how i did it so first of all i go and dump my ward this ward's not really that useful for me what i really want is sweeping lens as i spoke about last time right if you can hide in this bush you can avoid poke and if the enemy wards it you can use sweeping lens get rid of that and sit, your, sit in the bush and, and continue avoiding poke, right? So this is something, especially as melee supports against long range lanes, is very valuable. If you play a champion like Pike, like Blitzcrank, like Thresh, right? And you want to park yourself in this bush, avoid poke and be more threatening, you can do so, right? So immediately we're going to get to lane start. And already look at this, right? If I draw a line through the neutral part of the lane... You can already see we're past that point, right? We're already on the enemy side of the lane aggressively, and there's nothing they can do about it, right? If they face check this bush, as I'm a Leona, I instantly Q them and they die, right? So they have to stand on this far side of the lane, but even so, we're positioned more aggressively. They should still get push in this lane if they just simply hit creeps because they can kill them faster, but either way, I'm going to be able to avoid poke, and if the enemy makes a mistake and comes too close, I can attack them. And plus, I'm just positioned more aggressively, so I, if matey carry has a trade, I can very quickly respond and help him out. Awesome, so you can hear, I'm even testing Ash, right? If Ash walks anywhere near, I'm gonna be ready to go in, and she does. And so, of course, immediately I go in, hit the Q, and now this matchup that we shouldn't be winning until level three, it's completely one. Yeah, we've burned both sums, he's on 50 HP, but of course I'm a complete bot and I flash in and die. Unlucky. But either way, if I just left it there, lane was completely one. And so even playing a melee champion or in a lane that you are outranged, you can get that more aggressive positioning and you can take push. Let's check another one out. All right guys, so jumping on into our final VOD, it's gonna be another one of my games, this time Nautilus versus again, double ranged. And we're gonna do the exact same trip trick as before we're going to buy a sweeping lens and start off the lane so that we can utilize that bush to be more aggressive all right so instantly when the lane starts karma face checks so if twitch was positioned more closely i would have hooked here if twitch was somewhere around this area in range i instantly would have hooked right that is the power of this bush but of course you've got to play to get carry guys if he's too far back i'm not going to hook forward by myself all right so of course right as soon as Karma walks back and gives me the space to take this bush for free, I'm going to take it. And he has the correct response, right? He wards it. If he does not ward this bush, there's no way for him to get it back. He can't face check it, otherwise I'll all in him as a melee champion. He can't ignore it, otherwise there's going to be that same situation before where I'm on their side of that neutral skirmish point. So instead he wards it, and look what I have to do, right? If I stay in that bush, he can just simply attack me, so I have to fall back. So again, right, this is where I was last time, now I'm back here. So the enemy has done the perfect response by, by warding the bush, which makes me have to fall back, and so now he can just play out his nice range versus melee matchup. The one mistake he does make, though, is trying to contest too hard for this bush. So of course, right, fight for the bush as much as you can, but if you're gonna die for it, guys, just put a ward in it and go play back like normal. If he's in line with Tristana and he's playing somewhere around here, he can even stand here, behind the minions and throw things at me if I try and use the bush. But either way, he makes the mistake of walking up too far, trying to contest a bush that he shouldn't, right? When he should just use his ward. So he loses all his thumbs and almost dies. Very nice. Now the matchup's pretty impossible for them. And we're gonna see the power of it just one last time, right? I use my sweeping lens and now they have no wards left. They've had to ward both bushes and so now I can position extremely aggressively up in this lane. And so again, I'll constantly do this guys, draw a line through the middle of the minion wave. That is pretty standard, uh, one side or the other is where people should stand, but I'm so aggressively positioned. If I was standing here, I'd be getting auto attacked right now, wouldn't I? But of course I'm in a bush so the enemy can't do anything about it. And so it's either watch all their minions die or just try and flip it. They take the flip and it doesn't work out well. The one last thing, just to prove that this works well guys, I want to show how 
easy it is to see what I'm doing right now. The enemy can completely respond if I look for any kind of aggression. They have the reaction time to see me throw my hook and dodge it. But as soon as I eliminate these wards, this bush becomes a whole lot scarier. Karma can't throw her Q. She might just be wasting mana and I might be standing back here or here. Or at any moment I could be ready to flash in or throw hook and they just won't see it coming. So of course, hook finally does come. No time to react. She's already hit by it. And we get that kill. And now the lane is looking mighty fine. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're into this kind of stuff, go check out my other videos. Uh, and if you're really into it, go subscribe and, and leave a like. Thank you so much. Uh, go out and smash it.